What's up, guys? Have you ever wondered how to preserve your mushroom culture for long-term storage and keep them good for years? Well, I'm going to teach you guys in this video tonight. And I'm going to say if you're new and you're just now tuning into this channel, my name is Mike. I'm a mushroom farmer. I've been farming gourmet mushrooms nine years full time. Here's just a few shots of some of my grows over the years. But I basically grow all these mushrooms here on my farm and I sell them at farmer's markets and to high-end restaurants. We have over 270 videos on mushroom farming and mushroom cultivation on this channel. I'm doing daily uploads and monthly subscriber giveaways so if you're into mushrooms and farming make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you get more mushroom and farming videos like this in the future but anyway on to today's video let's talk about keeping your mushroom cultures around for long-term storage now I've got a whole bunch of centrifuge tubes that I have prepared here I like to make basically an agar slurry master culture okay I'm gonna show you guys how I do that I have a few of these created right here okay extremely simple process there there are a few steps to it though you actually have to grow out your culture on agar first so we're going to talk about that and we're actually going to preserve this culture that i have right here i have a whole lot of tubes here so i got a whole lot of work to do that i've got lots of cultures i'm going to be preserving but i'm going to show you guys exactly how to do at least one of these in this video but anyway what we're going to basically do is I'm going to take off the leading edge of the mycelium there. I'm going to cut a ring around it, make little chunks, okay? And then we're going to plop it into those sterile tubes, all right? And that's where I like to keep my cultures in for long-term storage. How long can these cultures last in these tubes? So several years, okay? They, they can actually keep for several years in a tube like this under refrigeration. So what I like to do is after I make them, I will basically put them in a Ziploc bag like this, and then I put them in a tote, in my refrigeration okay so i just keep them all in a ziploc bag in a tote in my walk-in cooler basically okay you can also wrap parafilm around the top of these i don't i just keep mine in the ziploc baggie i will say i will be selling some of these soon and when i ship them i will wrap them and everything like that so they will be totally sealed but these caps have a very good seal i want to say if you guys want to make some of these yourself i just got these on amazon they're self-standing sterile 50 milliliter centrifuge tubes. If you're wondering what is the basic procedure to kind of put together some of these tubes and have them completely sterile with water ready to work with, basically what I do is I take these tubes, got my jar right here, get a couple of these, get yourself some aluminum foil. I will fill up the sterile tubes with 35 to 40 milliliters of water. They are 50 milliliter tubes, but I put about 35 milliliters of water in them. I screw the cap down on them tight actually, I put them into the jar and then I just cover it with aluminum foil and then I pressure cook for 30 minutes at 15 psi. That will get them sterile. I just use normal tap water. Okay, if you have a high mineral content water or something you're concerned with, you may want to use filtered water, but my tap water here is actually really good. So that's just what I use in these. Now I will say I have had no problems with these things exploding in the pressure cooker, keeping the lids on tight these 50 milliliter tubes i just got them on amazon i'm not going to link it because i'm not an affiliate or anything but they're just the self-standing 50 milliliter centrifuge tubes and they've worked really good for me i've cooked hundreds of them and not had a problem so anyway like i said i filled them up 35 to 40 milliliters with water screw the cap on tight sterilize them 30 minutes at 15 psi allow them to cool I let them cool in front of my flow hood and then I just unload them in front of the flow hood. I double check just to make sure my caps are on tight just so no contaminants get sucked in anywhere. We wanna make sure these stay super clean because these are our master cultures, okay? So these are the ones that we're gonna be propagating from to make more agar or more liquid culture. What's really cool about these, when you guys wanna use these things, all you gotta do basically, if you got parafilm around them, remove the parafilm. I just take mine out of the Ziploc baggie right in front of my flow hood. But anyway, then you'll just wipe down the tube with alcohol. You can give it a little shake if you want. Carefully remove the cap, okay? You can draw out just a little bit of that slurry then, okay, with a sterile needle and a syringe and just put it on agar plate, inoculate more LC. You could put it straight in the grain if you wanted to. You can also use a sterile pipette and draw from this with a sterile pipette. But just be careful when you are drawing from this. Remember, always try to keep these as clean as possible because these are our master cultures and this is what we're propagating 
all our stuff from, okay? As far as how frequently should you make these things and just maintain the cultures on your farm, a lot of guys like to do it at least once a year, okay? And honestly, this is a good time of year to do it. Right after Christmas, right around New Year's time, just so you know, it's like, hey, this is when I'm making all my masters or I'm keeping track of all my masters. I actually like to make several for each of my streams just to make sure that I always have plenty of backups on the farm just in case but like i said these things can stay good for years so this is a great way to preserve your cultures now i'm going to show you guys how we're going to section off some of that mycelium on the agar and actually put it in one of these tubes here we go all right guys so we're going to do a little voiceover so i didn't have to talk while i was working here doing this but basically what i'm doing right now i'm getting all gloved up getting the gloves on my hands we're going to put some alcohol on the gloves and just wash up a little bit and then I'm going to show you some of my equipment and just some of the tools that we're using to get this done. But basically I got a scalpel on hand here. We got some paper towels, also some alcohol of course, and got the petri dish with the mycelium growing on it. You guys can see I got my centrifuge tubes up there. I got it in that nice glass. That way I don't accidentally tip it over or knock it over when I'm working on it. But anyway, right now I'm putting a little alcohol on that paper towel. I'm wiping down the petri dish. We're going to get the petri dish good and clean to open up and work with. I'm going to remove that electrical tape. I like to use electrical tape instead of parafilm. I've talked about that in other videos. I think it's a really cool little technique to wrap your petri dishes. But anyway, we're getting the petri dish ready to work with. We're going to remove the lid and then we're going to go ahead. We're going to get our scalpel ready and I'm going to flame sterilize my scalpel here in just a moment. And then we're going to get ready to go ahead and cut that leading edge of the mycelium off and then pop those chunks in. So we got the scalpel right here, getting it nice and red hot. After you get your scalpel good and red hot, Put it somewhere to let it cool. I go ahead and I put it in this little glass right here. But right now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to get things set up for myself, kind of get myself ready. I'm going to clean my hands off again. So I'm going to spray my hands off with alcohol again one more time right here. Always want to make sure you're always keeping yourself clean, especially with this stuff, because these are your master cultures. So here we go. Like I said, I'm cutting that leading edge right now. You're seeing me cut a little circle. I'm going to show you guys a zoomed in view of this piece of agar that I'm working with so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing here in just a moment. But like I said, I'm cutting a ring around it basically and then I'm making little chunks. So here we go. You can see I've got the little donut cut around there and I made little slits in it so I can knock out some chunks there. Now what I'm doing is I'm just going to carefully take my lid off my centrifuge tube. I'm going to put that centrifuge tube back in the cup, like I said, just so I don't knock it over because I like to work on these racks. And now we're just going to carefully take those little chunks of the mycelium on the agar and we are going to plop it right in there. Okay, so plop in a couple chunks, however many you want. I, I like to put in quite a few to make sure we got plenty of mycelium in there. We just put in a couple chunks and then after that, just go ahead and make sure you got everything clean and then you're able to go ahead and Put your lid back on and your culture will be preserved and ready for long-term storage. So here we go, we're just putting in a couple more of these. Okay, that's enough. We're gonna call that good. Lid's going on there. Good and tight. Let's give her a shake and show you guys. And there it is. All right guys, so we did it. Preserving cultures, like I said, for long-term. This is my agar slurry master culture method so this is my favorite way actually to preserve my cultures basically grow them out on agar get yourself some sterile water keep it in a centrifuge tube take some of that culture put it in the tube seal it airtight put it in your walk-in cooler or in your refrigeration and then they'll be good for up to a year and potentially many years to come so anyway if you guys have any questions about this feel free to drop it down below in that comment section like always if you have any suggested videos or any videos you would like to see please feel free to drop that down below in the comment section. But hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. And if you did, please drop this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that's all I got for you on this one. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.